Inflation has been stuck at 3.7%, but what does that mean for the stock market? What does it mean for the economy? And what does it mean for you? Let's go ahead and break it down. As mentioned at the beginning, yes, inflation has been stuck at 3.7%. That is far too high because you don't want to pay higher prices and neither do I. But when you start to look at context, going back from 1989 to 2019, so 30 years during that period, the average inflation number has been 2.5%. Okay, that's what we're used to. The Fed wants us to get down to two, but we're used to 2.5. Last I checked, 3.7 is still bigger than 2.5. So we are still a ways away from what we are trying to do. But what is going on here? Why is inflation stuck where it is? And what is the Fed going to do? What do we expect them to do? So one, why is it still high? Remember, we've done an entire video on how the inflation number is calculated. And more than half of the inflation number this time around is a factor of two things, higher gas prices, which I know that we all saw last month and rent prices, housing. That's it. That is the two primary factors. Yes, food is a little bit more expensive and other areas are more expensive, but we can bring down the cost of rent. We can bring down the cost of fuel. That is going to help us tremendously to bring down the inflation number. I know at least in my area in North Carolina, gas prices were above $3 and now they're, you know, like two seventy nine dollars or so. I'll take it. Okay, I'll take it. As long as that continues to go down, we're going to see a positive inflation number. We'll see what, what is going to happen in October. We're not gonna find that out until November. But what is the Fed going to do about this number? Because there are two ways to look at this. Now remember, when the Fed increases interest rates, they are doing so to bring down inflation, which has worked to a degree. Remember, we were at 9.1% early in 2022. That was a 40 year high. That was not fun at all. They brought it down to 3.7, but it's been stuck there at this point. So they're likely to increase interest rates at least one more time, which is what they have said for 2023. But now it's feeling like they are going to also do at least one in 2024. Here's the thing. We got a great jobs report last month. It is the September surge that I did tell y'all about. We added 336,000 new jobs to the economy and we we're only expected to add 170. So that tells me the economy is strong, okay? Now I know how we feel about the economy, but our feelings don't do math. The math says and the numbers say that the economy is fine. I know people have been rooting for a recession. I know some people want a recession. I don't know why you would root for that, but the numbers are the numbers and things are okay, even though we kind of feel a little bit shaky about it. But here's the other thing. The Fed is absolutely gonna look at that jobs number. They're also going to look at what's happening right now because it is earnings season. If you haven't noticed already, a lot of the banks have announced how well or not well that they have done. I haven't got a chance to dig through all of those because I'm not in investing in banks right now. However, once we start to see earnings from Walmart, from Costco, from Target, some of the consumer companies, that's going to tell us how companies are spending and how we as consumers are spending. And that's going to give us a proxy. It's going to give us an estimation for how the economy is moving. If they, if these companies come out and say, look, we've increased prices and we haven't lost any customers. We've increased prices. We've seen record profits and everything is fine. That's definitely going to tell the Fed that, hey, look, We've got some room to grow, uh, to go, and we can continue increasing interest rates until we start to see these things hurt a little, until we start to see th these things slow down just a little so they can get it at the exact right point. Because remember, they don't want to just smash on the gas and just increase interest rates like crazy. They started to do that and they increased rates at the fastest pace that they've ever done, at least in the last 50 years. And you know what happened? Banks collapsed. Yes, I keep reminding people that did happen this year. That wasn't two years ago. That wasn't one year ago. That was in 2023. That did happen. So they don't want to just mindlessly increase rates, which is why they have paused the last two opportunities they've had to do so, or the last two opportunities that they could have raised rates, they decided not to. This could be a sign that they might have to because inflation has been pretty much flatlined, at least the last reports. Jobs have been fine and we're going to see how well these companies have done. Now for you as an investor, what should you do? What should you expect? Really much of the same. Stay still. There, there aren't any breaking news reports or things that you need to do and change your portfolio based on the number that we just got. Now earnings season is upon us and wild things can happen, both good, 
bad or indifferent. I still don't think this is an opportunity for you to move your portfolio, but I do think this is an opportunity for you to listen, for you to read, for you to figure out what is going on and what a lot of these companies expect for the next quarter and for 2024. Because now, right now in October, and I would argue the last month or so, this is your opportunity to start to cobble together your strategy for what we expect for 2024. Don't wait until January or February 2024 to figure out what stocks you should buy in 2024. No, 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 no. This is your time right now because earnings season is one thing where you can figure out what happened in the past for this year and what these companies expect for the future. This is that time. Get your watch list together, get all your notes together, start reading and start absorbing information so you can figure out what you should be doing for the next year. The wealth that is going to be created in 2024 starts now. The wealth that's going to be created in 2024, I can also argue, started in 2014, right? Because you have been investing for a decade at that point in time. But the only way you're going to get ready is to start now. Start the research, the watch list, and everything in between. If you need a head start on what to add to your watch list and what to look out for, these are the videos that you need to watch next.